Greetings everyone. I'm Shujat Ali from Medicos Lectures by Shujat and today we are going to talk about Takatsubo cardiomyopathy. So it's a condition relevant to stress, relevant to apical ballooning syndrome. Stress might be physical, might be mental stress. And apical ballooning syndrome is a reversible condition of cardiomyocytes damage that also due to stress. So major important factor is stress. So we have two main forms of identification. First is ejection fraction it is reduced ejection fraction is pumping ability of heart so that is reduced cardiomyopathy it is increased as well as ecg findings are signs of ischemia on ecg which is similar to acute coronary syndrome so our first major point in diagnosis of takatsubo cardiomyopathy c ejection fraction c cardiomyocyte c ischemia signs on ecg pathophysiology it is still unknown main pathophysiology or main signs they are still unknown but they are as we earlier discussed that it is relevant to stress so some physical stress might cause it some mental stress some emotional stress some accident loss of beloved one some financial hardships and catecholamine excess catecholamine excess catecholamine is relevant to motor functions so if excess of catecholamine occur there is an abnormality in motor functions occur as well which basically take us to condition of takatsubo cardiomyocyte now we have second important point for diagnosing this for identification we will see microvascular dysfunctions and spasm but with increased troponin level second point first we see ejection fraction ecg changes cardiomyocyte damage then we have microvascular dysfunction as well as troponin level increase troponin is very important in contraction when we discuss about sarcoplasmic reticulum and the whole phenomena so in contraction troponin has major role in muscle contractions so troponin level increase due to that increase we have contraction occur and takatsubo it's in basically japanese word and we gave it name from octopus its shape is similar to this so we gave it name as takatsubo cardiomyopathy now third point for discussing for diagnosing is talking about systole and diastole like patient approach to us we see a diastole phenomena we observe so in that feeling of ventricles take place but in systole there is cardiomyocytes in apical section they are hyperkinetic in case of systole diastole there is filling take place in ventricle but in case of systole there is hyperkinetic cardiomyocytes in apical section so it is third important point after those mi changes ejection fractions after microvascular dysfunction troponin increase due to that increase troponin we have contraction and after that we have systole hyperkinetics we also have four important points in which we see angiographic evidences wall ruptures in which we see transient disturbances in which we further see the symptoms that palpitation occur shortness of breath occur chest pain its level according to severity as well as we will see fainting that is occur we will see palpitations that are basically in patients so with that we will see its ecg changes signs of ischemia with that we see this vascular dysfunctions with that we see apical uh, systole dysfunctions as well as pheochromocytoma absence on myocarditis so they are also very important identification in diagnosing of tucker subo cardiomyopathy now will diagnose it now we have to move towards the treatment of this condition first line treatment or first treatment is supportive as we earlier on discussed that it is relevant to stress so we also have to educate patient how to cope with stress and uh, we also have to educate the surrounding of to basically provide him a stress free environment to reduce troponin level as well as that neurokinetics disturbance which is occurring to reduce those those we will basically provide supportive treatment second is heart failure treatment so in those we will use arbs we will use beta blockers we will use 
diuretics we will use repetitive echocardiography to check out either there is any improvements are occurring in this stacked subocardiomyopathy patient so like if we take name we will use velsartan telmisartan dromosartan and we will use selmetrol formitrol albuterol or we will use in case of uh, diuretics loop diuretics or thiazide diuretics hydrochlorothiazide or furosemide so depend upon the condition of patient we will devise a treatment of patient while in our state exam we have been presented with clinical case that a patient approached to us in women it is more as compared to men and women are being presented with menstrual absence so they are saying that a woman is presented with menstrual absence have shape like octopus like shape as well troponin level increase catecholamine disturbances and after that they will give you like a shortness of breath palpitation and uh, fainting so devise your diagnosis what are diagnosis for this condition so diagnosis is definitely going to be tuckered subocardiomyopathy so that's all from our today's uh, short lecture on tuckered subocardiomyopathy hope you all guys will understand it well in case of any query you are more than welcome i'll be there for you guys my number is mentioned on channel as well as page description you guys are more than welcome in case of any query and then i just request you that if you are new to medicos lectures by shijat then don't forget to subscribe medicos lectures by shijat jazakallah khair thank you so much guys